Hello and welcome to Nerd Subculture. I'm your host, Jared. And I'm Edwina. And this is our Once More With Feeling series on Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Today, Eddie, we're doing Season 5, Episode 8, Shadow. Shadow. This episode, first aired November 21st, 2000, written by Joss Whedon and David Fury, I believe, both mm-hmm. of them together, and directed by Daniel Adius. Over to you, Eddie. All right. This is a full spoiler podcast. I'm a huge fan, but Jared has never watched the series all the way through, and I'm trying to convince him it's worth his time. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah. No, it wasn't that bad. It was okay. Um, what was it like for you, Eddie, if we were watching this episode? The first time you saw it, comparing to two? What do you think? Uh, yeah, this episode's pretty awful. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I was trying to be nice. For a few reasons. Uh, What this episode is mostly remembered for is that horrible CGI rubber... The snack. Snack. (laughs) The snack. The snack. S-N-E-K. The snack. The snack. Yeah. Or what does... I think Glory calls it snakey-wakey. Snakey-wakey, yeah. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Where's Snakey Wakey? Um, yeah, it, it's all, like the CGI is, it's not great. No. But it also doesn't match the rubber puppet. Mm-hmm. Or what would it, pros, or Costume prosthetic, or something, yeah. whatever that prosthetic is. Like it, it was just very rubber. Yeah. Like it had no movement in it. Oh, he could skateboard. <laughs> skateboard. He was just on a trolley. <laughs> yeah, and then when it was CGI, it was very different. Mm, to yeah, the d- d- puppet. D- yeah, d- the contrast was uh, was really obvious, wasn't it? Yes. Mm. Yes. Didn't really match. The movements didn't really match. Because now a lot of the times they will use those prosthetic puppets and add CGI to them. Yeah. So it looks a bit better. Mm-hmm. But it's still, it'll always have that uncanny valley feel anyway. Yeah. I'm looking at you, Jurassic World. <laughs> Oof. Shots fired. But, and the other issue with this is that it takes those C, C plot threads about Joyce's illness and Riley's insecurities and it puts them front and centre. Uh, what well, do you think it should have more focused on one and not had several going at once. You think that might have been a better idea? Uh, I don't know. You sort of, like, when I was doing the summary for this or the um, synopsis this episode, it was very difficult because it jumped from three different scenes. Like, they're either at the hospital or the magic shop or it's focused on glory. Or yeah. Yeah, it just goes back and forth. It was a little all over the place, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, so it was very hard to just summarize the episode, yeah, it's hmm. because it really is a focus on the main issue is Joyce, but then you've got this glory stuff going on, and then you've yeah. got the stuff with Riley, hmm. and it's just yeah, it's just a bit messy. Yeah, uh, but most of the conversations are actually really well written, hmm. um, which I do like. There's some really good Anya lines. Glory has some. Really good dialogue as well. Yeah. Like you can't, you know. Teenage um, evil woman. <laughs> <yes>. <laughs> Almost. Vapid, vapid. Vapid, yeah. She's just sort of got this vapid valley girl. She's, yeah, like Cordelia in season one. Um, but you know what? I, I don't normally skip this episode. There's something about the campiness of this episode that I actually do like. Yeah. Like it's it's entertaining. Hmm. That's that's what it is. It's well, if it entertains you, then it's something, isn't it? Yeah, because you can Just point the- at that snake, going, "Oh my god, you can <laughs> see that it's a rubber snake. It's got a jiggle in the snake. <laughs> it's just pulling that snake out." Just the worst offense is to bore me. So <laughs> yes. don't do that. Yeah. So I'd rather laugh at the the snake jiggling than what be bored. Yeah. Absolutely. So, so is yeah. that maybe why you didn't completely hate this episode? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's won me over a little bit, <laughs> the, the awful effects. And mm. rewatching it again was uh, quite hilarious. But uh, before we get into any further, Eddie, let's just do the quick summary. 
quick long summary and uh, we'll get back to it. Joyce gets a CAT scan while Buffy and Dawn wait impatiently for news at the hospital. Meanwhile, the gang all admire the shop's new advertisement in the phone book as Xander complains about Riley destroying the vampire crypt alone. In some luxurious room, a demon offers a spell to the beast that will reveal the location of the key. He calls her Glorificus, although she prefers glory. She too is admiring the advert for the magic shop. Riley finds the front door to Buffy's house open and Spike is being a creep in Buffy's room. Spike taunts Riley with his knowledge about Buffy's mother. Riley shows up at the hospital to comfort Buffy. She directs him to sit down with Dawn in the waiting room while she talks to her mother. Joyce confesses the doctors have found a shadow. At the magic box, the gang is oblivious when Glory shows up to buy supplies for her spell and leaves the store without incident. Back at the hospital, the doctor tells Buffy that her mother has a brain tumour. Anya panics as she goes through the receipts and finds the items that Giles sold to Glory earlier, knowing they are ingredients for a Sobergan transmorgification spell. It finally dawns... No pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> it finally dawns on Giles that the woman he sold the items was Glory herself. Rolly takes Dawn to the park to comfort her about her mother. Dawn tries to make Riley feel more positive about his relationship with Buffy, but unintentionally makes him feel worse because 14-year-olds are relationship experts. Buffy turns to magic to get help with her mother's illness, but is shut down by both Tara and Giles, who insists that any magical intervention will only make things worse. Anya then lets slip that Giles sold Glory the ingredients needed to make a monster. At the Sunnydale Zoo, Glory steals a rubber cobra and performs the spell. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Buffy arrives to stop her, but instead gets thrown around like a ragdoll. The cobra is transformed into a weird giant rubber snake with arms, and Glory sends the demon on a mission to locate the key. Riley arrives at the magic shop and acts like an entitled dick and is called out by Xander. Nice, Eddie. Buffy calls Giles from the hospital and tells him to take care of Dawn while she stays with her mother, where she receives more bad news. Riley returns to Willie's place to continue acting like a dick. Eddie. It was just shorter than what actually happened. Okay. <laughs> it, just, it was just easier to write he's been a dick. Okay. Then All right. yep. he gets himself intentionally bitten by a vampire and then stakes a... Yeah I, yeah. I, yeah, I guess, yep. The cobra-like demon arrives at the magic box. Dawn screams in fear at the demon, having found its target, leaves to report to Glory. Giles and Buffy chase after it, and with the help of a chain, Buffy is able to beat it to death and continuously thrashing it long after it dies as a way of letting out her anger over her mother's condition. Nearby, Glory watches from a window, frustrated as Snakey Wakey fails to return. Joyce tells Dawn the truth about her health. Riley is there to comfort Buffy, but she refuses to accept comfort for him, and he is left sooking in the hallway. The end. Someone really, really doesn't like Riley. <laughs> Whoever wrote that. I don't know who wrote I don't this. Know who wrote that? Who wrote that? Being a dick. All right, Eddie. So where do you want to start, Eddie? Uh, to start with, I think you worked out pretty quickly why I don't like season five. And it's mainly because when this was airing in 2000, mm -hmm. uh, my mum had already had surgery to remove a brain tumour. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, the first surgery, like she had, I think she had a surgery in 99. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that surgery went pretty well and she recovered pretty quickly and was all fine, but they didn't get it all. And it came back in 2000, um, pretty much around the time that this was airing. Yeah. And the second surgery wasn't so good <laughs> and she was incredibly sick and they didn't know whether she was going to make it. Uh, she pretty much had to learn how to talk again. Um, I think when you first met her, did she have the eye patch? She did, yeah. You said your mum was a pirate. <laughs> yes. Um, so all that, like, it was very close to um, where the muscles were in her eye. Um, 
and they were damaged during the surgery because there was a lot of scar tissue. That's what caused a lot of the issues. And so she had this years, good nine years of something of um, surgeries and procedures on her eye. And I think eventually she did get her sight fully back, but it was like Botox injections and it pointed the wrong direction <laughs> for a long time. And it, yeah. she had an eye patch on for years. Um, but yeah, so this overall, like it, it just meant that Buffy, which was always a good little escapism for me, just became a bit too real. A little too close to home, yes, wasn't it? Yes, very yeah. close to home. So it wasn't the comfort I needed at the time. Mm. Like I needed my escapism and it was just a little too close for comfort, which is why I don't particularly like season five. And Glory is a great villain. Good distraction, yeah. Like she is a great villain, but it's it's the stuff with Buffy's mum that is very, very difficult for me to watch. Mm. And can I say, I suddenly realised when watching this show um, and reading about what was going to happen with uh, with Buffy's mum, and I had no idea about the character. I did know she died, but I had no idea what was going on. And watching these last few episodes, it, it suddenly dawned on me uh, how close to home this would have been for you at the time you're watching this. Mm-hmm. Like I had at sort of like, wow, you know, Eddie was going through this stuff with her mum and it's very, very closely to what your mum was going through with the operations and on the tumour on the, the side of her scan head. And and cat scan, and yeah. Sitting in the scenes where they're just sitting in the hospital. Yeah, and I just imagine like you were going through all this stuff at almost the same time or just before or just after when the show was airing. Um, and I'm like, ooh, geez, I had no idea that this was going on with a show that you loved. And it, it uh, yeah, it really, it sort of hit me a little bit too, Eddie. I've got to be honest. Like, I didn't realize that this is what you were going through and watching this at the same time. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Yes. All right. Um, moving on. Moving on. Moving on. Moving on. Because that, that is sort of one of the stronger plot threads. I, I seem this. like it's a missed opportunity in the show that, like, that should have really been the, the main arc of the show and this other stuff was kind of... De- uh, deterring? Yeah, sort of deterring from what the main plot was. and yeah. un- Undermined it a little bit too, I feel. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think it's it's that Buffy even, you know, with her duties as the slayer, even when shitty things are happening in her life, she has to still keep fighting. Yeah, soldier on. And that will probably bring me into the next point is the difference between strong and tough. Yeah. Okay. What's the difference, Eddie? Is there a difference? <laughs> <laughs> well, this, well, you know, she, Buffy's. Well, I suppose when you say strong, you're talking about physically strong, but when you're saying tough, are you talking about mentally tough? Mm. Your mental strength. Yeah. Is that. But tough is. Does tough sort of mean you can take more hits? Yes, yeah. So you can take the hits? Yeah. And being strong is mean, meaning you can land the hits? Yeah. Is that what it means? I guess. It's something yeah. to think about, though. Yeah. The difference between tough and strong. Where she's saying that she has to stay strong. She has to sort of be this kind of pillar for her family, which is why I kind of get a bit pissed off with... I'll, I'll go into that. I'll, I'll have a bit of a Riley rant. It's going to be no, a long we'll Riley rant. save the rant, yeah. Um... But yeah, that that is a definitely a theme in this episode is the difference between strong and tough. As you said, it's just like Buffy just has to keep taking these hits. Mm. She has to be tough. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, so the name of the episode said that would bring this up. Yeah. So it's called Shadow. We we actually had a pet named Shadow. I know. We lost her earlier yeah, this year. Yeah, I know. Poor Shadow. Um, another pet named after her. <laughs> oh, she wasn't. That wasn't. She was named Shadow because she followed me around like yeah, a shadow. Yeah, she was your shadow. She was my shadow. Um, yes, and all the different meanings in this episode for Shadow. So it's the fact that they say that. They she had a shadow on her head. She had a yeah. shadow on her head. Uh 
Glory Spell actually has the line in it that um, it's find what is shrouded in shadow. Oh, yes, because the keys in the sh- Yes, yep. And then Riley's off letting vamps bite him in the shadows. Mm. Or he's kind of been a bit shadowy. Okay, Doing yeah. Doing shadowy shit. I'll allow that. <laughs> Riley's off doing shadowy shit. It's more shady than shadow. <laughs> Shady. It's shady. Not shadow. Shady's in a daytime. No, you can say shadowy. <laughs> shadowy. It's doing shadowy shit. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, and the biggest um, criticism of this episode is the snake design. Um, poor little snake. Snake. <laughs> snake wacky. Snake Snake wacky. Um, yeah, he's. Yeah, it's just the, I think it's the arms. I don't know. Cop, maybe giant cobra probably wasn't a great idea. But it, it's also it's not the first time there's been a giant snake. Yeah, it looks there's, better than the previous one though. Well, I <laughs> that don't one know. was awful. I don't know. Well, Even okay, there. Uh, we're talking about okay, talking about the effects. Now I've been watching TNG, Star Trek: Next Generation. Mm-hmm. Of course, everyone knows. Everyone knew what I was talking about. Shut up, Wesley. That show. Started in 1987, so I'm probably up to about 1991, about season five when that mm-hmm. came out, and the effects in that are pretty good. Yeah, but wasn't it? It was Star Trek on a main major network, what, NBC or something. Yeah, which yeah. is a major network. Yeah, but like this is 91, and this is 2000. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> nearly 10 years later. Okay. All right. Yeah. Um, and like they are doing it at night and stuff, so it's not like a broad daylight sort of mm-hmm. creature. Um, yeah, when well, it's running through the streets, my God, oh, yikes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, and then we'll cut to the guy in a rubber mask just sort of flailing his yeah. arms about. <laughs> He's on a, as you said, on, on like a, what do you call it? A lazy Susan maybe. <laughs> and then actually when I was rewatching it before, we know when she's punching Yeah, you can see it, it wobbling. Yeah, it's like wobbling, like just sort of <laughs> shaking. <at it>. Yeah. <laughs> even better is. It looks ridiculous. Even better is when, um, when. Glory pulls the snake out of the through the window. Yeah. And she's holding it. And you can see the rubber shaking. Yeah. And she's trying <laughs> yeah. to make it look like it's moving. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, well, it's got that rubber rubber shake. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> like it doesn't look a little bit real. No. Can't get a so, real snake. Maybe a real dead snake. I don't know whether they can do that. No. Get a snake and kill it. And then. <laughs> no. I don't they have think to they take can. off that. Warning that no animals were harmed because one was. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I don't know. Like even a like a stuffed dead snake would have been better than a rubber. Like maybe a taxidermy snake, yeah. maybe. Hmm. Surely they have props like that or something, you know. I just go a rubber one. It'll be fine. Well, now they would have just done a fully CGI snake, or they would have had her actually handling a snake. Yeah, maybe. But then again, uh, it's not high definition TV. No one will ever notice. <laughs> again, it was on a very on a minor network. What network was it on now? Uh, WB. So that's a minor network, is it? Yeah. Okay. Is it still going? Yeah. Oh, okay. uh, I think it was going through. Some... Oh, there was a big merger recently, yeah, wasn't so there? Yeah. So there was. Yeah. There was. What is it? It was the double... Time Warner, I think, merged with someone else. and Yeah. I can't remember how it worked, but there was like UPN and the WB because that's why uh, Angel ended up on another network. Oh, did it? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Okay. And of course, we're in Australia, so we don't care. It just yeah. was always on Channel, channel 7. Yeah. We just got the <laughs> 7, 9, 10. Yeah. <laughs> ABC. It was just at, on a Tuesday night at 10.30. <laughs> and then we, sex before soccer. <laughs> Bit of SBS. Yeah. You confuse people with that. People, you've <laughs> been confusing people with so that. I was going to watch sex before soccer. I'm like, oh. Yeah. Uh, tell yes. Eddie I said hi. <laughs> All right, Eddie, uh, what else you got for us tonight? All right. So I think it's time for my Riley rant. All right, Riley rant, here we go. Because a bunch of the focus is on Riley and his insecurities and he's having, you know, it's an identity-driven tailspin that he's going through, which I'm not a fan of. Um, this this 
rant might be a little long. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Bastard. So, so uh, the first thing that I'm going to start with is that super fucked up conversation that he has with Dawn at the carousel. Uh-huh. <laughs> I love that you're like, uh-huh. Yeah. Um, and saying, you know, um, he gets upset with Dawn when Dawn's saying, oh, you know, Buffy doesn't get all worked up the way that she, you know, comparing him to Angel. How, But she was she saying it in a positive way, like, you know, it seemed to be a tormenting relationship between her and Angel and this one isn't. Yes. Like, that's a good thing. Yes, exactly. <laughs> but it's played as a bad thing. Yeah, yeah. Well, to him, it's like, to him, oh, it, so he, to I'm him, not that much of a To him, he saw fuss. it as a bad thing. The other thing is, is that Dawn hasn't been there for most of their relationship, as in most of the drama that went on in their relationship happened when Buffy was at college and lived in a dorm and didn't see her sister yeah. in this world, in the memories of her existing. Uh, even though, you know, she was created. Um, Mm -hmm. But again, Dawn never saw that. She's only seen the past couple of months in the house where they've been relatively happy. But, okay, now we're getting into a bit of a plot hole stuff here. She seems to be aware of this stuff, though. Like, she knows Angel and who he is. Yeah, yeah. Like I'm saying, she does know all of that stuff. Uh, But the stuff with Riley... Yeah. She, Buffy wasn't living at home with her in this new world. Even in the world where Dawn didn't exist in the last season, where yeah. she didn't show up. You saw Joyce twice last season. Yeah. So she had hardly anything to do with Dawn last mm. season. She's hardly seen her sister. So how would she know for the bulk of their relationship, Dawn doesn't have that information. Well, she shouldn't, you're saying. Um, well, I, I mean, the way he, he could justify it is maybe she overhears or she spoke to her on the phone about the stuff that was going on. I, I mean, no, she it. wasn't like, that's the way he could justify it in his head that, oh, he must have heard from, you know, when Buffy would call her mum and saying, oh, I'm having shit going on with Riley and then, oh, she know. barely sp- she yeah. barely spoke to her mum. She barely had anything to do with her mum. You saw Joyce Oh sorry, I said twice. I think you see her three or four times. It's yeah. and for a very short amount of time. She's not front and centre. No. And yeah, I just don't think Dawn was a part of that drama like when there there was they have had drama. Like the initiative yeah. caused them a lot of drama. Yeah, like I just don't think a 14-year-old girl is a good judge of your relationship. Yeah. Well, I, it wasn't really her judging the relationship but saying just saying the fact that she doesn't fuss over you like she did with, with uh, Angel. Yes, but it's a different – but her, again, Angel and Buffy's dynamic was very, very toxic. Yeah. Like that's – like the relationship that she has with Riley – Though they, on his part, he's lacking some communication skills. Um, but his biggest issue is is that he's got nothing else going on. His yeah. entire focus is on Buffy. And her her entire focus is not on him. Well, it's on <laughs> his, her mother his... who's terminally <clears throat> ill. So since he's, he's on the backseat of that, so he's got nothing much to do just to sit at the bar and drink and get bitten by vamps. <laughs> Even prior to her mum getting sick, her priority was on learning about her slayer, her inner slayer. Like she, yeah, she wanted to get stronger and really study what it means to be a slayer. Uh, like he has been an afterthought. Um, like she's just focused on other things at the moment. Yeah. In conclusion. In conclusion, he does need to get a fucking hobby or a job or some new friends, like a new group of friends. He has a very unhealthy mindset in their relationship because then he also lets Spike get to him. Spike starts making these – Spike calls him white bread. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Fucking white bread. Uh, and, nice. and it is that thing where, you know, you, you'd think that they would have learnt by now that Spike loves taking those insecurities that you already believe about yourself 
and brings them front and centre. And well, they're the ones that cut the deepest. Yeah. Well, it's all he can do, though. Yeah. That's, the th- that's all he can do. Like, he yeah. can't do anything. He can't hurt you any other way. So that's the only thing he can do, and he's really fucking good at it. And he's really <laughs> good at it. He's really good at pinpointing it. But again, he lets him do it. Like, yeah. Don't worry. And and the truth is, Riley is really insufferable in this episode. Yeah, he is. Uh, and it gets to, like, there is that part where he comes in going to Giles, you let Buffy go after, <laughs> you know, you let Buffy go after Glory. And Giles is like, let? What do you mean, let? <laughs> you, don't, you don't stop Buffy. When Buffy wants to do something, she's going to do it. There's no let her do it. Exactly. Uh, so he can't control her. Yes. Um, and that scene at the end where he's like... Um, You're doing a mocking face. <laughs> I'm about to do the mocking face. Um, where he's like, let it all out. And I'm st- standing there going, like, you know, you're watching it going... It's the wrong time, it's the wrong place to say to her, it's time to, you know, let out all your emotions. Because she's in she's in the hospital, her mum's 100 metres, like, within hearing distance of her. Like, yeah. They're in the hallway of a hospital and he's just like, let it all out, you know, cry on me, you know, get upset, you know, throw it, you know, mm-hmm. you know melt into my arms and be, you know, be vulnerable with me. And it's like, how about you wait until she's at home and alone and not in public and not in front of her mum and sister and then say, you can let it all, you know, yeah. I'm here, let it all out. Yeah. Like it was just that wrong time and place. And then he gets all sooky because she's like, no, I have to, I have to stay strong. I have to put this brave face on. And she knows that if she starts, she's not going to stop. She's not going to be able to walk into that room and be a support for her mum and her sister. Yeah, if she's all broken down and stuff. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So him doing that to her in that time and place was just, oh, I just wanted to punch him so <laughs> hard. And then he just goes off to a bar. Do it now. Yeah. Oh, no, I think it was prior to that he'd gone off to the bar. And gotten bitten and he's wearing his bitey, hidey, skivvy thing. Oh, the skivvy. The, the, <laughs> the skivvy of deception. <laughs> yes. The skivvy of deception. We've all had to wear one of those before. Oh, yes. They're kind of handy. Yeah. For hickeys. Yeah. In high school, they were good for hickeys. Uh, all right. So that was your Riley rant. Um, oh, I haven't even finished my Riley rant. Oh, really? Oh, God. Um... But also, he's hardly around in this episode. Like, he's just not in the room when he should be. Well, he's kind of just there, but he's not. He's either at the hospital or at the house. Yeah, he's kind of like chasing her, like not where, yeah. where she is. Yeah. And even Spike sort of pointed that out, that, you know, you're at the hospital and she'd even tell you. I mean, he must have known he, she was at the hospital. So why did he go to the house for? No, she didn't tell him. She didn't tell. But the uh, other thing is she didn't yeah. tell anyone. Right, yeah. Because it, it, I think it's one of those things, once you start telling people about it, it it becomes more real. Yeah. Um, and then you have to deal with it and people ask about it and it becomes something you just don't want to deal with other yeah. people. Yeah. And and believe it or not, people do not deal with those kind of diagnoses very well. Yeah. They really don't know how to handle I, it. I often hear it. There's sort of a thing that happens and they kind of did it in this episode too. When someone is diagnosed with a terminal illness, mm. I saw, I can't remember who it was that was explaining this, but the doctor says to the person, I'm going to say something to you and you're not going to hear it. Yeah. And I'm going to say that, you know, you have a terminal illness. And and the person that said they heard this, is, it said it's exactly what happened. As soon as you started speaking, I just didn't hear a word. And they kind of did something similar with Buffy where the volume or the, the level of the doctor's voice sort of, Muffles out. Muffles out a little bit as he starts speaking. Mm. Like you don't, and that's sort of something that sort of happens with people. Like you just, you kind of, your brain just switches off. Yeah. And you don't hear what they say. Yeah. Because you don't want to hear it. Or, you know, I think it's a defense mechanism of some sort, maybe, to not hear the bad news. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, I remember in Battlestar Galactica, I did that too with uh, Rosalind. 
Ah, uh, yeah. When they yeah. tell her that she has breast cancer. Yeah. And as she starts speaking, it, the, you just sort of hear the white noise to sort of turn up really loud yeah. as you start speaking. And you don't sort of hear what he says. Yeah. Like, I think that that's shock, though. Sometimes when you go into yeah, yeah. To shock, that kind of happens. But it's also like a million things start rushing through your head. So you, yeah. So you don't hear what they're saying because all of the, everything kind of rushes. Like exactly, all yeah. the thoughts rush into your head. All the yeah, yeah. The <clears throat> your brain just goes into simulation mode. Of, okay, what happens if this? I got to do this. I got to yeah. do that. You know, and can't sort of hear what's in front of you. Yeah. All right. I think I'm done on my Riley rant. Uh, a little trivia thing. I just to, to, to slide in there. Ready? Um, mm-hmm. The carousel. Oh yeah. Was in the Buffy the Vampire Slayer movie. Oh okay. Yeah. I didn't know that. It's a famous carousel. In uh, Los Angeles, the and Griffith Park merry-go-round, sixty-eight horses go, have gone up and down since nineteen thirty-seven. Hmm, also, wow. an episode of Castle. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So, sort of a link there. We got Captain Tight Pants. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he does. He, oh yeah, you already know that he does actually. Oh yes, he does. Yeah, he does appear in the yeah. show. Yeah, yeah. Uh, had you seen this episode? Um, no, no, I haven't seen this episode. No. Um, and did you go down any rabbit holes? I just went down a merry-go-round. That was about it. <laughs> you just went down a merry-go-round. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, nothing, uh, nothing of interest in this episode. Eddie. That's how great it was. <laughs> <laughs> if I could know one thing, Eddie, mm-hmm. it's a possibility that that snake costume is out there somewhere. Someone has it. Yeah. <laughs> it must be around. Uh, you know what? It probably is in like a... A prop vault or something. Yeah. Oh, sometimes like those, like I know with Doctor Who, like they send the props and stuff on tour almost. Chuck them in a museum. And... Yeah, they create like little exhibitions using all the props. What was the one we went to? Was that was that in Cardiff? The yeah. The one we went to? We yeah. went to one in Cardiff. I think we went to one in London as well. But the one in Cardiff was pretty cool though, wasn't yeah. it, from memory? Anyway, lead on. Allons-y. All right, Eddie, uh, do question time. Question time. Answer the question. Okay, Jared. Which character was your favourite? I guess Glory. We could say yeah. Glory. Glory. What Chuck Spike, Spike and everybody had the one scene, didn't he? He really only had one, one scene, scene. <laughs> and he was brilliant. Left an impression, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I had the same. Glorificus. 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 Uh, though I do like Dreg. Dreg. Her, little, her minion that, was, that she was dregs. talking to. Dreg. Oh, stay away it's from a, the Dregs. It's a great name, Dreg. <laughs> Dreg. <laughs> uh, which character do you love to hate? Uh, do I have to say Riley? Well, yes. Yes, you do. <laughs> that is the only answer for this yeah. episode. Or you could have said Snake, Snakey Wakey. Snake, yeah. But even he was, kind of had more per- personality than Ooh. Ooh. Riley. Jesus. <laughs> Just dishing out all the insult, insults tonight, aren't you, baby? Oh. Let it all out. Let it all. Yeah, that, that um, yeah, I'm giving it to Riley just for that line. Let it all out, huh? Yeah. It's okay. Just let it out. I'm right here. All right. LOL moment. So Buffy just punching the snake at the end. <laughs> as, it, as it sort of cuts, as this camera cuts sort of pans out. up yeah. and it's just, and it's just there. You know, she's just punching it. Uh, yeah, that it's one. All, you know what it reminds me of? You know those um. You know those infomercials where there's that there's that rubber man that you punch, like it's like a boxing. Oh yeah, didn't we have one? Oh, oh yeah. No, no, yeah. no, no. Like it's like a rubber man. Like it, it's like a. It it's like a like torso, a, isn't it? I yeah, think it's like Alex a torso yeah. when you punch it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's what it reminds me of. Uh, but yeah, like yeah, I, I've pretty much got any any scene with the rubber cobra <laughs> makes me laugh. <laughs> Can I uh, honourable mention Spike and Buffy's room? Oh, sniffing Smell, her sweater, smelling her clothes. Being so creepy. Did he? Did he? Did he knock off a pair of knickers on the way out as well? Yeah, I think <laughs> he grabs like he was stealing some of her clothing. Yeah, 
Mm. To put on the mannequin that he has. Oh, dear. Yeah. And he's smelling her clothes. Like it's He's super creepy. And he, he's always been a creep. He's just extra creepy in yeah. this. Yeah. He's amped it up for sure. Mm. Uh, favorite fight scene? Uh, again, fighting the snack. <laughs> <laughs> See, I went with Buffy and Glory in the reptile house because Glory really, like, throws Buffy around like she's nothing. Again, too. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's almost the the Hulk and Loki. <laughs> <laughs> Puny God. Uh, all right. Least favorite scene. Snick. <laughs> which one? <laughs> it's a favorite and least favorite scene I've got is the snick. Can you say which one? Oh, probably the one where he's like uh, snicking down the street. Yeah, yeah. I was about to say you, yeah. you've got to be more specific. The, the CGI one going down the streets. Yeah, bad. yeah. Uh, my least favourite scene is, yeah, just Dawn and Riley at the carousel saying, you know, about how Riley doesn't make Buffy sad and the fact that he thinks that's a bad thing. Yeah, it's funny that, isn't it? Yeah. It really shows how disillusioned he kind of is about the whole relationship. Like, that's that should be normal, he, her crying over him. Yeah. Like, that's, you know, why isn't she crying over me? You know, I'm... I'm Fantastic. Okay, but Buffy was only ever crying over Angel because they actually had like sort of this forbidden romance Mm. Uh, and sort of a Romeo Juliet um, kind of take on the vampire, vampire slayer. Yeah. uh, Which meant that they couldn't be together. That's why they made each other miserable. (laughs) It wasn't healthy. No. It's not healthy. That's you don't want that. That's not what you want. All right, favorite quote. Uh, I've got a quote between Xander and Rupert. Xander says, "Am I right, Giles?" Rupert replies, "Almost certainly you're not." But to be fair, I wasn't listening. <laughs> uh, Xander also calls him Captain America. Yes, he did. <laughs> yes. So he gets called Captain America and White Bread. Yeah. In the same episode, so I'm going to do the line where. Spike calls him white bread. <laughs> so it's like Spike's like, okay, how's about this one? Twice in recent memory, she's had the lover wickers do a de-invite on the house, keep out specific vamps. Ever ask yourself why she's never taken my name off the guest list? And Riley's like, because you're harmless. And Spike's like, oh, yeah, right. Takes one to know one, I suppose. <laughs> Least I still got the attitude. What you got? A piercing glance. Face it, you're white bread. <laughs> oh, sorry. Face it, white bread. Buffy's got a type and you're not it. She likes us. Dangerous, rough, occasionally bumpy in the forehead region. Not that she doesn't like you, but sorry, Charlie. You're just not dark enough for her. Oh, God. I am the knight. Oof. What? So does Buffy want Batman? She probably would. Tormented enough. Yeah. Lost his parents. All right. Who gets the wooden spoon? I think Riley gets a wooden spoon. Also, maybe Dreg. Poor Dreg. Yeah. And Snick, um, I guess, maybe. Maybe Glory. I was going to give it to Glory. But you know what? Give it to Riley. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Riley, he's a doofus in this episode. Yeah. Or as I like to put it, he was just a dick. Just a dick. <laughs> just acting like a dick the whole time. Just a dick. I know, when he stakes Sandy, like, what did Sandy ever do? Like, he was, she was just there. Like, he let her bite him. Like, she didn't attack him or anything. And he staked her. I was just like, poor Sandy. Just, I don't know. It it was just sort of nothing behind the eyes, too, when he did it as well. It was just in his own little world. It just felt a bit. Uh, Maybe it's sort of also that's kind of that thing where, because he took on those vamps on his own as well. Like, he was just. Being a little self-destructive, like getting yeah, bitten, another, like going right to the edge, yeah, because she could have killed him, yeah, but he killed her first. So yeah, it was another him acting out. Hmm. What do you call it? You know, sort of yeah, as you said, pushing himself to the edge, hmm. putting himself in dangerous situations. Yeah, 
But still, like, poor mm. Sandy. No, she didn't deserve it. <sighs> All right. Who's the MVP of the episode? Well, I guess Buffy is the MVP. Yeah, I give it to Buffy because she had to keep her shit together and also battle a giant rubber fucking snake. <laughs> so. I thought you were going to say battle a giant fucking dick, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and a giant dick. In a, in a rubber and snake. not in the metaphorical sense. <laughs> Oh, dear. All right. What do you rate this episode out of 10? I think, I'm, you know, I'm going to say four snaky wakies. You told me snaky wakey would bide my <laughs> A bit key. predictable, I guess. Yeah. I'm going to go with three out of 10 vampire bike covering skivvy jumpers. But for our American uh, listeners, uh, a turtleneck sweater. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah, don't it's know a turtleneck what, sweater. I don't know what a they skivvy is. They wouldn't know what a skivvy jumper is. <laughs> they wouldn't know what a jumper is. What the crazy language. Mm-hmm. Or a skivvy. And uh, I think that's it, Eddie. Yes. Yes, it is. All right. Uh, just going to wrap this up. Well, I uh, hope you've enjoyed listening to us tonight. We are Nerd Subculture. My name is Jared. And I'm Edwina. And if you want to find us and uh, report at us or. Review us? What do you want to do, Eddie? Well, you can find us on TikTok, Twitter, Instagram. There's a Facebook group, and you can email us at nerdsubculture at gmail.com. And if you want to help out the podcast, please follow the link tree on the socials to the merch store. Yes, and please but like, no, follow, no. subscribe. Oh, yes, like and subscribe. Yeah, chuck a comment, something like that. Anyway, I don't care. Do whatever you got to do. I've got to go. <laughs> See ya. Bye. Right, bye. Let it out. I'm right here.